Ham Radio versus GMRS. Let's talk today about the differences between Ham Radio and GMRS Radio coming up right now. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0, good evening. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. And I am WRFK311. That is my GMRS license, WRFK311. This channel is Ham Radio 2.0, where we discuss news, reviews, and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. But here recently, I've been doing some more stuff with just two-way radio in general. Uh, done some FRS, done some GMRS, done some CB stuff. Going to be talking more about CB radio upcoming. And this series, I actually have been working on putting together slides for this series and ideas, just jotting down ideas for this series for two or three months. But this series comes directly from a search on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and you type in Ham Radio Versus, it comes up with eight or 10 or 12 different things that people search for on YouTube to compare ham radio to this, that, and the other. So today, we're going to take a look at ham radio versus GMRS. I'm going to give you a breakdown of each one. This is going to be a high-level overview. I'm going to tell you which one you should have and what the differences are. So let's get started. So some of you might come along and say which one is better. It depends on what you're using it for. Okay, realistically, ham radio is better. And I'll tell you why ham radio is better is because GMRS is one band. Now, what is a band? A band is what we commonly refer to in ham radio as a set of frequencies, okay? So we will say the two meter band. We will say the 70 centimeter band. We'll see the t say the 10 meter band or the 30 meter band or the 15 meter band or something like that. The band is differentiated by wavelength. When I say two meters, 15 meters, 10 meters, I'm talking about wavelength. The distance between the crest of each wave on a radio wave or the trough of each wave on a radio wave. When it's shorter wavelength, it's a higher frequency as seen in the chart here. When it's a longer wavelength, it's a lower frequency. So your lower frequencies like 3.5 megahertz and 7 megahertz and 10 megahertz are going to have a, a longer wavelength than the higher frequencies like 220 megahertz or 440 megahertz, which is 70 centimeters, or 900 megahertz, which is 33 centimeters, okay? So the higher you get in frequency, the closer the trough and, and the, the two crests or the two troughs of the wavelength get together, and the shorter the meter. So when we say two meters, we're talking about the distance, two meters instead of two yards. They use it in meters in the metric system. So two meters roughly, Roughly, it's it's rounded, okay? The way you get the meters and wavelengths, and you'll learn this in your technician test, the way you get the meters and wavelengths is you take you take the frequency you're working with and you, and, and you divide it into 300. So if you're working with 144 megahertz, which is the two meter band in amateur radio, well, let's say the 440 band, okay? If you take 440 megahertz and you say 300 divided by 440, it's close to 70. Okay, and we round up. We don't say it's like the 70.32564 meter band. If you take a perfect example is uh, 10 megahertz, which is the 30 meter band. Okay, if you take the number 300 and you divide it by 10 for 10 megahertz, you come out with 30 meters. If you take the number 300 and you divide it by 30 for 30 meters, you come out with 10 megahertz. That's the easiest way to remember it because those numbers are all even. Okay, but like the 28 megahertz band in ham radio is referred to as 10 meters, and it's close. 10 meters would be actually be 30 megahertz. Okay, so opposite of 30 meters is 10 megahertz, 10 meters is 30 megahertz. Okay, but we don't have 30 megahertz exactly. Our portion of the band runs from 28.1 to 29.7. It's right there next to so So instead of saying 30.125 meter band, we just say or I'm sorry, 10.125 uh, meter band. We just say 10 meters. It's just a, a nice round. So the GMRS band, the reason I'm telling you all this, the GMRS band is one band and it's channelized. There are multiple bands in ham radio. There's actually a lot more bands than this listed. This is a pretty good listing of them right here. This is the US amateur band plan, according to the AWRL. 
the section, uh, yeah, this is part 97 of the FCC, part 97 of 97.313. So you can say it goes from 2,200 meters all the way up here in the top left corner and then down to 23 centimeters, which is 1,240 megahertz down towards the bottom right corner. And then down below that, you've got all of these bands on top of that. All licenses except novices are authorized mo on all modes on the following frequencies. So you've got 2.3 gigahertz, 3.3 gigahertz, 5.6 gigahertz, 10, 24, 47 gigahertz, 76 gigahertz, 122 gigahertz, 134 gigahertz, 241 gigahertz, and all frequencies above 275 gigahertz. Those are some very, very, very short wavelengths, okay? So in amateur radio, which you have to take a, a test for and pass a 35-question test out of about three or 400 uh, questions in the pool, you get access to most of these bands in the technician test. Then you can upgrade to general. You get access to more bands. Uh, you get access to all of the bands with general. And then with your extra, from general to extra, you get access to all segments of the bands. It doesn't add any more bands as an extra, but you get to talk on more portions of the band. So in other words, your frequency allocation on the band is is longer. You have more areas on the band where you can talk if you're an extra over a general. But the general license gives you access to every band, HF, uh, MF, LF, VHF, UHF, and above. So in ham radio, you have access to all of these bands. You can use modes like FM, AM, single sideband, uh, digital modes like RIDI, FT8, PSK31. You can use CW, you can use amateur um, TV, you can use slow scan TV, fast scan TV. There's many, many different modes you can use on many, many different bands in ham radio. The difference between ham radio and FRS radio is that, or GMRS radio, and FRS and GMRS share a lot of the same frequencies. So we're going to get into FRS in another episode. But the GMRS band is based, is one band. It's around the 462 megahertz frequency spectrum which is just above the uh the f what we call the 70 centimeter band in ham radio we have as as licensed amateur operators we have access from 420 to 450 megahertz and there's different portions of that band we can use for slow scan tv digital cw fm repeaters etc gmrs is just a little bit higher in frequency than that ranging from about 462 to about 467 megahertz it is channelized. So in other words, if you take channel one on GMRS right here, which is 462.5625 megahertz, and you look at channel two and it's 462.5875 megahertz, you have to talk on either 462.5625 or 462.5875 megahertz. You can't talk in between those two channels with a legal GMRS license. As a ham radio operator, I can talk anywhere in between 420 and 450 I want to. I can dial down to 5875 megahertz. I can, or like, say, 441.5875 megahertz. If I wanted to go to 441.5870, I could do that. If I wanted to go to 441.5880, I could do that. It's not channelized. I have complete access to the VFO, the variable frequency oscillator, all of the frequencies in between 420.0 and 450.0. It's actually 449.9999. I have access to all of the frequencies in there to use as I want to. Now, there are best practices and band allocations that have been set up by the AWRL where you're supposed to use certain modes in certain ranges of the band. But I have access to all of that as a licensed amateur radio operator to use it as it is intended. In GMRS, I can only use channel one, I can only use channel two, and I can only use it in FM frequency, what's called FM or frequency modulation mode. I can't talk in AM mode. I can't talk in CW. I can't send digital packet radio over the band if I wanted to. There are a, a few exceptions to that rules, and I'm not gonna dive deep into GMRS today, but Suffice it to say that out of all the bands you get in ham radio, you take one of those bands, which is the 70 centimeter band, and you, you have a frequency allocation that's just a few megahertz above that band for GMRS, and that's GMRS. So your GMRS license costs you, it's about to change. Your GMRS license will cost you $70 for 10 years. 
So that's $7 a year and it covers your entire family. And all you do is go sign up on the website. You go find, I'll put a link in the YouTube description below. You go to the FCC website, you fill out a form, you pay your $70 and they send you via email your call sign. Mine is WR. FK311. I keep having to look at it because I'm not, I haven't used it in a long time. I haven't used it in a long time. I'm about to start using it more. We're going to st start doing more GMRS videos on this channel, but WRFK311 is my call sign. I just got online, filled out a form, paid my $70, and it's good for 10 years, and it covers my entire family. I don't have to take a test. My wife doesn't have to take a test. If I had kids, which I don't, they wouldn't have to take a test. But if we all went out and went camping together, we could all use the same exact call sign that would cover our family in, in, uh, in a camping environment, in a hiking environment, something like that. GMRS also allows you to use radios and repeaters up to 50 watts. FRS is limited to about 2 watts. Ham radio, on the other hand, I can use 1,500 watts. Now, I wouldn't want to use that on FM. In fact, you might have trouble finding uh, an amplifier that's that hefty for FM on 440. But you can use more power than FRS, not as much power as ham radio on the GMRS spectrum. And your GMRS radios, unlike your F FRS radios, you can take the antenna off. You can put an external antenna on it. You can run a 50-watt mobile radio. The FRS frequency spectrum, which shares a lot of the channels with GMRS, you have to have a fixed antenna on your handheld radio. There are no mobile radios. You're limited to two watts or less. And so, so the range on it's not as good. The receive range on the radio is not as good. So GMRS upgrades that quite a bit. You've got better radios with more power and better receivers, generally better receivers, better antennas, better antenna options because you can trade out antennas. You can put a mobile radio in your car with a, with a fixed antenna on the top of your car or a mag mount antenna. You can talk into repeaters and you can do all of this in ham radio also, but this is the difference between FRS and GMRS. Now, again, with ham radio, I can talk on the 440 megahertz 70 centimeter band. I can talk on the 2 meter band. I can talk on 1.25 meter band. I can talk on the 23 centimeter or the 33 centimeter band, all in FM, all with up to 50 watt mobiles, all with external antennas on my car, all using repeaters. GMRS, I can only do that on one band. There's a 22 channels designated to GMRS that are limited to that license. But it's easy to get. All you got to do is pay your money. And I started to say a minute ago that the, the GMRS license is $70 right now. The FCC is about to change that. They're going to drop it from $70 to $35. So you're fixing to have to pay $35 for a 10-year license that covers your whole family. You get it, and you just fill out the form and pay your $35, $3.50 a year for 10 years, and you're good. Um, the same thing is actually going to happen for ham radio coming up. At the same time, they change GMRS. They're, they're changing both. GMRS and ham radio to $35 for 10 years. So what is my recommendation? So what are you saying, Jason? You say I should get a, G a GMRS license over a ham radio license? No, I think you should get your ham radio license. Do you think I should get my ham radio license and forget about GMRS? No, I think you should get a GMRS license, okay? Suffice it to say, I, I have everything. I have my ham radio license. I've, had, I've been a licensed operator I've had a ham radio license since 1994, okay? I have a GMRS license that I've had for a little bit over 10 years. And of course, I have FRS radios that I use at my hunting lease for guys who are not licensed, uh, not ham radio licensed. I have a CB radio. I don't keep it in my truck all the time, but usually on road trips, I'll put a CB radio in the truck. So I have, I think you should get everything. Okay, you're going to be seeing more videos about FRS radios, CB radios, and even VHF marine band radios coming up on this channel. Why would you want to limit yourself? Okay, so ham radio versus GMRS radio, which is today's topic. Okay, ham radio gives you more. You get more power. You get more bands. You get more choices of radios. You get more options on your handheld radios. You get more options on your mobile radios. You get more options on HF. You get HF which you don't have in GMRS. But GMRS gives you a different segment of a band. The two bands are not interchangeable. Legally speaking, you cannot use a ham radio on a GMRS frequency or a GMRS radio on a ham frequency. In fact, most GMRS radios won't even go to the ham radio frequencies. They won't even monitor that far down. Some of them will, but most of them will not. 
but they won't transmit. You won't be able to transmit legally with a ham radio on GMRS or transmit legally with a GMRS radio on ham radio frequencies. There's two different set of frequencies. So why would you not want both? Why would you limit yourself to one and not get the other? My suggestion is to get both. Just to know and understand the difference is the purpose of this video. I don't want you to think that ham radio is better than GMRS. I think ham radio is better than GMRS, and I make no apologies for that. That's my opinion. You may not agree, and that's okay. But I have a GMRS license also, and the reason I got it is because I have access to more frequencies, more people who don't have their ham radio license. There's three or four repeaters in downtown Dallas on GMRS that I can use anytime I want to, and I wouldn't be able to get there with my ham radio radio in my car and my ham radio call sign. I can't use, legally speaking, I can't use those GMRS repeaters. So I suggest pick one. If you have nothing right now, go get a GMRS license, try it out for a little bit, and think, you know what? This is pretty cool. I wonder what it's like in ham radio. Go study for your test, take your test, get your ham radio license, and experience the wide open range of multiple, multiple bands, multiple modes, and multiple features you can do with ham radio that's not possible on GMRS. 73 which is ham radio speak for best wishes. Have a good day. Put your comments below. Let me know what you think, and we'll catch you next time.